are you who God really says that you are? And that's going to get tested on multiple levels at multiple times. And so the fact that you're being tested, that's not a bad thing. Jesus got tested in it. What it's designed to do is it's designed to bring us into a greater place of knowing and power and wholeness and health that we can rest in who God has called us to be, which is sons of God. Now, out of that identity, we do produce and we do perform, not for love, but from love, because it says that we are we are Christ's workmanship put on this earth to do good works. And so, you know, all of us have a mission and all of us have uh, a, an assignment on this planet. And so if you aren't producing and you aren't performing from a place of love, you won't feel like you have a lot of purpose in this life. But we don't we do not do it so that we're valuable. We do it because of how he made us. So anyways, welcome to uh, the same boat as all of us are in. <laughs> yeah, and I love what you talked about just shedding the perspective, reading through that. It's like, Jesus was baptized. Holy Spirit came upon him. This is my son who I'm well pleased. You said he got that identity, but the identity was tested. And I think everyone has that, but I loved how it was an actual test because I thought we look at wilderness as it, as if it's so easy to recognize. Like if God put us into a wilderness, picked us up, threw us in one, and some like dark demon thing came talk to us, then we'd be like ready for the test, right? We're like, oh, this is that time, but not like e every single day right? Like in this daily process of, okay, I think this is something that I'm being tested in. And one of the last things that you talked about was that he said, I'll give you everything, which is basically like, I'll shortcut where you yeah. don't have to be, oh, I'm going to shortcut it for you, but just do it this way, which could be again, doing something mm -hmm. negative for a positive result. I just, I, I just listened to a story about this of a guy that, you know, he wants to give money away to people, but then he sells bad products and services to try to make money so that he could give more money away. It's like you're doing something negative to create a positive result. And I could see that that is something that, I mean, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross, right? He wouldn't have had to sweat blood. Like he knew what was in front of him if he didn't try to get rich quick of what he was being tempted by and how often do we go through that? And so just kind of mapping that out in three phases like you just did is gave me clarity as well, as well as like, I really can defeat that test with what the word of God actually says because he overcame that test. And it didn't say like Jesus then next week also got tested to see if he would turn a rock into bread again, maybe a different test but it wasn't the same thing. And a lot of the guys, they literally struggle with the same thing their entire life. But with the word he was tempted and also with the word he defeated, and you said he walked in a greater power afterwards, like almost defeated something that now he like moved on to obviously probably harder things. But what's your thoughts on that? Because I think a lot yeah. of guys think, I'm going to struggle with this forever, this temptation. What yeah. is that? How do you see that working? Well, let me just say that one of the easiest ways to beat it, to defeat it, is to remember why you're doing something. And so I remember when I first started speaking, um, I came on staff when I was 24 years old uh, to Bethel Church, became a pastor and started speaking. I'm sharing the pulpit with really great men. You know, I share the pulpit with Bill Johnson and Danny Silk and Dan Fairley and, and my dad. And these guys are men who, you know, are are very profound in the Christian world. And so it's, it's quite intimidating to get up and speak from the same pulpit, you know, because you're being measured and you're being tested whether you want to or not. It's just human nature, right? People are listening to me talk and they're going, do I like him? Do I not like him? And they're measuring me according to every other speaker that takes that platform, which is okay. Again, it's not an evil thing. The, the challenge is when I start to measure myself against who I think that I should be, right? And so I remember when I was 24, I, I spoke a couple of times and I'd get off stage and I'd ask myself this question, how did I do? And I, 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 really, I really wanted to do a good job, but I'd always leave insecure because again, my measurement was unbelievable realistic. I'm going, did I do as good as my dad? Did I do as good as Bill? Do I do as good as Danny? And the, the truthful answer is no. And I remember one time I got off stage and I started to ask myself, like, how did I do? How was that? And right away, the Lord corrected me. And he said, he said, you're asking the wrong question. He told me, I don't want you to get up here and preach so that you do a good job. I want you to get up here and preach so that you change people. And, and when you get up on stage, your job isn't to preach good. Your job is to change people. And honest to God, this is the, like, I know it sounds really Christian. That is what happened to me. That's what changed me. So instead of getting up and trying to perform really well so that I would get accolades, which is human nature, it's not even evil. It's just human nature, right? I started to reshift my focus and go, why am I getting up here? I'm getting up here to change the one person, which what 
what that does is it connects me to my passion. And when I'm connected to my passion, I actually perform better because I believe in what I'm talking about. I, I, I feel passion. I'm convinced in why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm in right alignment. And that really changed everything for me. It's a better measurement than am I a good man? Am I a good speaker? Am I a good teacher? Am I a good businessman? The better measurement is am I doing what I'm called to do? And so, you know, am I a faithful servant? That's how I would say for you even and all, you know, the rest of us guys is like, don't go, am I the best businessman ever? Am I, do I have what it takes? Am I pleasing? Am I worthy of affirmation and respect? No, the better question is, am I doing this for the right reason? Can I look at God and say, I am your servant who's willing to lay it all on the line every time I come to work, every time I come to my family, every time I come to my wife. I'm not the best husband in the world, but I hope I'm the best version of me today. I hope I'm the best servant today. I hope I'm, I hope that I can put my full effort in and being okay that that's enough because everything else besides that is the poser, is our ego. Everything else besides that is just me trying to do something so that I feel worthy of love. Again, that's the temptation. That's the temptation, but that's my ego talking. That's my inflated wow. ego. I need to reframe that and go, am I doing the best with what I have been given? Because that's the measure that Christ is going to measure.